There is something about the look of a horror character. You could have a great story, but if you have a character that just doesn't leap off the screen visually, then it takes something away from the movie. So this is going to be a fun top 10. We're going to count down my top 10 favorite outfits of horror. What's up guys? Welcome to another Drum Dumb's Top 10. I posted a question on Twitter. Give me a top 10 and I will name it after you. I got over 100 submissions. Thank you guys so much for that and so many great ones in there. Okay, so for this one, this one's going to be for Destiny Faulkner. She suggested this one. She was the only one too. And this is an irresistible one, actually. I mean, this is part of the love of horror and it's right there at horror conventions. When you go to a horror convention, it's like a visual feast. You see all these great cosplays of these characters that we love so much. So it's going to be fun to actually count down all the greats. So there's so many on here that I got to give you five honorable mentions, okay? And I'm just going to go through these real quick. I always say that and end up spending about the same time on the honorable mentions as I do on the regulars, but oh well. So first honorable mention is going to be Lola from The Loved Ones. I just like, like how she's in this prom dress while she's torturing this guy who didn't want to be her prom date. There's a little tip for you young guys out there. If Lola asks you to go to the prom, you damn well better go to the prom with her because if you don't, her and her dad are going to have fun with you. But I just love how she has this pink prom dress, which is kind of the antithesis of how deranged and psychotic she is. What I'm saying is I want a Lola Funko Pop, like right now. Next honorable mention, Leatherface. Uh, because Leatherface, he literally cuts off the skin of his victims and wears it over his face, you know, and this is something that has been copied, you know, a few times down the line. You know, this just, that's just how iconic it is. But really, the idea was actually taken from real life, from Ed Gein, who would do that. And he, like, cut his own mother up, which is crazy. But Leatherface was great because he had that, but he also had, like, this suit, like this Sunday suit on. So it's this mixture of all these crazy things, and this family itself is completely insane. So it's like an extension of the family. But he actually has skin over his face. Not a situation you want to be involved in. Okay, third honorable mention, I'm going with Chucky on this one. And you know what, why not sh visually show you? I mean, everybody loves Chucky because he's a good guy. He has these sweet little like Oshkosh overalls on. He's got the uh, the striped shirt, you know, the, the, the red hair. Everything from head to toe is uh, like a visual feast uh, with Chucky. You know, even, even the shoes. So it's fun when you got this little kid, kid doll like killing people running after people and he's this foul-mouthed um asshole of a doll thank you brad dorf i think i'll let him sit right here why not and while we're at it why not have elmo too okay i'll, I'll have my little buddies right here next to me it's gonna be nice we're gonna have a good time right guys okay uh the next honorable mention i'm gonna go with baby from house of a thousand corpses that movie specifically because she kind of dresses like a kid she's got a dress on uh, and also it's the, the laugh, everything about her uh, screams psychotic woman. Who is my favorite movie star? M Marilyn Monroe. Hmm. No, Betty Davis. Sorry, you lose! <laughs> ah! Ah! And she has like no remorse whatsoever. It's like the more damage she does to somebody, the happier she is, you know? And she would, she would probably want to be like sucking on a lollipop as she is stabbing somebody. But also the hair, you know, the, the curly hair. You're going to see a few psychotic females on this list if you haven't picked up on that already. I think if you have a psychotic female, it takes it an, a, another step forward. I don't know why, but I think, I think that's the case. Maybe because uh, us men, we're kind of idiots when we are in the presence of uh, an attractive female, you know? We, we let our guard down. And last honorable mention, we're going to go with Celine from Underworld. The Underworld series, they're not the best vampire movies. A little cheesy. Uh, the first one's really good, though. I, I, I like some of them. I like Rise of the Lycans, too. But one can't deny Kate Beckinsale in a leather outfit. It, it just, it's like peanut butter and jelly. They go together perfectly. Maybe that's a bad analogy. But it's fun watching Kate Beckinsale kick ass in these movies, you know? And I think if she didn't have the, the leather suit, it would take something away from it, right? Okay, here we go. Jumping into the top 10. Number 10 is going to be Ghostface. 
it's a misconception that it's based off of the Scream painting. I even thought this for the longest time. But if you go back to the toy maker who actually made the Scream mask, I think it's Funtown. They have stated that it wasn't from the Scream mask, so I don't know. And I think they still own the rights to the Scream mask. I don't think the Ghostface mask is scary, but I do think it's a great outfit. Uh, and, and it's one of those where he's not wearing like coveralls or anything like that. He's got almost kind of like a shroud, like a, almost like a doily, like a black doily over him. Is that the wrong word for it? But he's just one of those horror icons that really sticks out when you see him on screen. When, most of the time he's running, you know, he'll like run across the frame. Um, and it's expressionless, you know? They're, you don't know what is behind the mask whatsoever in terms of like how he's feeling. You know, it's the same face every time. And we'll get more into these types of characters throughout the list. Okay, that's enough of you guys. Okay, number nine is Norman from Psycho. Uh, you know, there's, there's two different Normans, right? Because he's regular Norman, and then he's Mother. That's a little bit of a spoiler for you there, but this is a movie that's uh, really, really old, so you should know this by now. But at the end of Psycho, when he's dressed up as Mother, uh, that just adds a layer of creepiness to the story. Some might say Norman is kind of a cross-dresser, right? But he's so like obsessed with his mother. This is another one of those movies that was uh, inspired by Ed Gein. Been quite a few movies actually that are inspired by Ed Gein. But you know, picture like the, the shower scene. If you just had like a regular guy coming up and holding that knife up, that's one thing. But when you see the silhouette of an old lady coming, holding the knife up, it ups the ante a little bit, you know? It makes it even creepier. Number eight is Jason Voorhees. Of course, he's gonna be on here. He's had many looks throughout the years. My favorite, I gotta go with part seven. Uh, you know, Kane Hodder's uh, a great Jason. He's played the character four times. He's not my favorite Jason, but visually, he is my favorite Jason in part seven. You know, and he looked different in every movie that he did, but part seven, John Carl Beekler, wanted to show like every bit of battle damage Jason had had from the previous movies, which was a genius way to do it. And even the mask was like chipped and cracked. You could see his spine because the skin was like ripped off. He was pretty much zombie Jason, but he also had like this hulking physique. Uh, he was menacing, you know? I don't think he was particularly scary until the mask came off in the end of the movie, but he was still intimidating as hell. Number seven, I'm gonna give you a two for here because it's from the same movie, Night of the Demons. And I had a tough time figuring out which character I wanted to put on this list. Was it gonna be Suzanne, played by Linnea Quigley, or was it going to be Angela? And uh, it, I, I put both of them on here because they're both like very different visually. Suzanne is famous for the lipstick scene where she's like drawing around her breast, uh, but she's also got like the pink dress on. And she's Linnea Quigley, you know, who is a whore icon. And then you got Angela, who was a trained dancer and she does an amazing job in that dance scene and she's got this like black dress and Angela is like the scariest thing in the movie because when she becomes a demon uh, that scene with her like floating down the hallway that's the stuff of nightmares number six Pennywise and I'm gonna get a little controversial because there, I think there's enough of a difference between Tim Curry's Pennywise and uh, Bill Skarsgård and I'm gonna go with Bill Skarsgård. I think uh, the makeup work on him is a little scarier than Tim Curry, taking nothing away from Tim Curry. I think he is iconic, and he was the first as Pennywise, but this was a character that was written by Stephen King. So it doesn't matter if it's the 10th guy playing him, it's how the character is presented. Uh, I've seen the original, like I said, I think it's a, an effective portrayal. But I think Bill Skarsgård, and he did have a, a little help from CGI, but uh, to me, he's much creepier, much creepier. Love how his face looks uh, inhuman, you know, because he is kind of an alien. He is an alien. So his face doesn't look normal. He's got this massive forehead. And I've seen so many cosplays of Bill Skarsgård's Pennywise that you almost have to put him on the list. He's kind of an androgynous character too, you know? There, there's females that play him, there's males that play him at these cosplay conventions, and it, it all works, it all works. Number five, Carrie. Um, you know, it's another, I guess another prom dress, but uh, you know, I, I'm gonna include the blood in this recipe. You have to have the blood over the prom dress, and when you see Carrie coming out and doing her thing in that crazy De Palma ending,
uh, visually it is so damn striking. And Sissy Spacek completely owns the role. And to me, I think Carrie is like the best anti-bully movie ever. Number four, we're gonna go with the gas mask killer from My Bloody Valentine. Uh, and, I, and I believe this particular character, this particular outfit is one of the most underrated. And I think that's just because we never got a sequel. We've had a remake, but this is a property that just begs for a sequel. Uh, but, you know, speaking on the, the look of the gas mask killer, I've always related to it because I was in the military and we used to do these, these chem warfare exercises and I used to have to wear that freaking gas mask like constantly. And it sucked because you're, you're literally wearing this thing for hours and hours and, you know, your breathing is definitely taxed. And by the time you get out of the thing, you're sweating your balls off. So it gives me an idea of what the gas mask killer is going through as he's trying to kill his victims. This is a guy that probably doesn't enjoy having to wear the gas mask, but it's just part of his look. It's a really cool look too. And oh, by the way, if my beard looks a little thicker, it's because I forgot to record number four, and this is a couple days later. So there you go. Okay, here we go. Top three, what could they be, right? Number three, Pinhead. And I'm not gonna lie, I almost put Pinhead as number one. I think he is probably the most visually striking in terms of creativity. Like having this skull with all these nails in the head. I mean, you don't even want to touch the guy because, you know, it, it'll hurt. You can't punch him. And then he's got this like S&M get up, you know, with his, with his attire. And he's probably the most dangerous character on this countdown. You know, he doesn't have to touch you. Uh, you got Doug Bradley's menacing uh, voice, low register. Everything about Pinhead is really like a perfect build. You know, building a character from the bottom up, uh, just everything about him is painstaking detail. Number two, my boy, Michael Myers. And I almost uh, didn't put Myers on the list. Not because I love him so much, but at face value, you think, it's just a pair of coveralls and a mask. But then I started thinking about what is scary about Myers? It's the mask. Th there's something about this blank expression. I can even quote like Tommy Lee Wallace when he was talking about going out and looking for the mask. And he found this like Emmett Kelly clown mask and this William Shatner mask. And the William Shatner mask wasn't white at first. And so he thought, okay, this is kind of interesting. And he came out with the Emmett Kelly mask and it was creepy, kind of creepy. This could work. And then he spray painted the William Shatner mask, teased up the hair, and when he came out, he said it literally sent a chill down everybody's spine. It was one of the creepiest things, and you didn't want to go near it, you didn't want to touch it, you wanted to stay away from it. It's almost like this happy, genius accident. And without that mask, I'm telling you right now, Halloween would not be what it is today. There's no way. It's something so creepy and crazy and iconic about that mask that still to this day, people love it so much. And you know, there's been many iterations of the mask throughout the sequels. Some work, some don't, but when you get it right, man, it is scary as hell. Okay, number one, who could be number one? Freddy freaking Krueger. That's who number one is, okay? Because uh, like Pinhead, Freddy, is a complete build from, from head to toe, all the way from the green and red sweater, which those two colors, they're, they're, the human eye can't register them that well. That's what Re oh, Wes Craven said. You know, they're like kind of opposites and, and it kind of plays with your head a little bit. But then you got the burned face. So many different makeup artists have done Freddy throughout the years. I think number two has like the best. And then of course, the, the glove, you know, that iconic glove, that was genius. And it's one of those things where if you create it, nobody else can ever do it again, you know? You can, you can make a mask and have five other movies that have some variation of that mask. Like, say, for instance, the Myers mask and, you know, the Valentine mask. There's, there's a similarity there. But you can't copy the glove with the knives. That's Freddy's. And it's the only time you'll ever see that in a Nightmare on Elm Street movie, unless it's like a parody or something like that, you know? And, and then Robert England, his portrayal of the character is just perfection. It's fun because he can talk and that just adds another layer to it. You know, just imagine this killer that can't say anything. Yes, that's scary. But then if the killer can say something and have fun with the victim before he kills them, then that 
kicks it up a notch. So that's it guys, my top 10 favorite horror outfits. What are your favorites down in the comments? I know that there's so many more that I didn't mention. Looking forward to seeing what you guys think. Also be sure to come over to Killer Flicks where we talk horror all day and every day on Fridays. We do free for Fridays. Follow me at Drum Dumbs on all my socials. Support me on Patreon. Buy me a coffee. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day and Drum Dumb out.